Hello, hello, and happy Freelance Friday. I am back, and I am so excited to start fresh. This is one of my favorite times of year, but in order to start with a clean slate, you've got to look back a little bit at what worked, what didn't work, and use that to move yourself forward. So today, we've got my kind of annual production meeting, as I call it. I totally consider you all my producers, and hopefully this will help you conduct a production meeting of your own. Uh, no matter what stage of business or creation you are in. So let's talk about my strategy. If you've been tuning in for a while, you know that my recommendation is to start with one long form content platform and one short form content platform. Long form, the benefit of it is client attraction. It's SEO, search engine optimization. It's helping you rank for a particular keyword or topic. Short form, what that does is it kind of helps with some of the trendiness, you know, some of the virality, keeping you current, if you will. So, you know, YouTube is great for people who are researching stuff. TikTok or Instagram is great for people who are just kind of scrolling and more into some of those lighter hearted things they might just sort of be passing by. So the first thing you might be thinking is, well, how do I know which platforms are right for me? So this is a bit of a bigger question. Obviously you have to just think about what you're attracted to first. Like does YouTube channel sound totally terrifying and not at all comfortable? Well then maybe don't start with that. Does podcasting sound interesting? Does TikTok sound interesting? You know, you have to use your intuition and your gut a little bit here, but something else, once you kind of have a preliminary list or an interest list going and you try some things, well, then you can look at your data and see what's actually making the most impact to your business. So that's what we're gonna do together first. What I like to do every year is I like to look at my Google Analytics dashboard and I am not the smartest, you know, most savvy person with Google Analytics or any analytics platform, to be honest. I just know how to look at the basic stuff like my channel report. And, and this Google Analytics account in particular is for my course website, so courses.latashajames.com. So this is showing me which of my social channels are driving the most traffic to that website. So as we can see here, listed number one is YouTube. That one, totally just crushes the next one, which is Instagram. So YouTube drove about 24,000 users to that website this year. Instagram drove 1,300. So quite the difference. Um, if we look at the, the lowest one, right, we've got Blogger with three, Twitter with four. So I know as much as I might love Twitter or used to love Twitter, I've been on a Twitter diet for a couple months now, but whatever, as much as I might love that platform, if I have to make a choice, I am gonna choose YouTube and then I'm gonna choose Instagram. You know, we can dive deeper into this report. This is not a Google Analytics episode, so I won't bore you too much. But you know, another thing that you just wanna make sure to do is cross check that with some of the other metrics on this report. So for example, bounce rate, um, if we look at Reddit here, I do love Reddit. I'm on Reddit all the time. That didn't drive a lot of traffic for me and I don't know where it came from because I don't post my own stuff on Reddit, but let's just pretend it did drive a lot of traffic. That bounce rate though is really, really high, which basically means that people who are clicking over are immediately clicking off of the website. They're like, oh, I'm not into this. Same thing for Instagram stories. That's a little bit high, 53% bounce rate compared to like some that are in the 40s, you know, LinkedIn at 41. So I just need to keep that in the back of my head too, you know, just because you're driving a lot of traffic doesn't mean that it's necessarily good traffic or qualified traffic. So keep that in mind when choosing your platforms as well. And then I can kind of choose like my secondary platforms as well. Like I said, I, I focus on those two as my primary platforms, but looking at this, I do definitely see a lot of potential in LinkedIn. You know, I see a lot of potential in even Facebook to some degree. So that might be something that I put on the agenda for 2023, which is actually kind of true. I do have a LinkedIn learning course coming out. So I do want to be a little bit more active on LinkedIn. So if you're not following me on LinkedIn, you can go shoot me a follow. I'll be sure to update about the course and stuff on there. And also just since I did um, stop using Twitter this year, I think my plan is to start using LinkedIn a little bit more like Twitter, you know, for some of those text updates that I might wanna share. So I do think that there is a network to tap into there. I, I think I posted like four LinkedIn updates in 2022. So there's definitely a lot of potential. So now that I've got that figured out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a report for the, my primary channels. 
I love to use the tool Metricool. I've talked about it before on my YouTube channel. If you've seen any of those videos, I will link them in the show notes for you. If you want to check out how to actually create this report in just a few minutes, it's super cool. Uh, social media scheduling platform. But my favorite thing about it is the reporting features. It enables you to pull these reports. They're very beautiful. You can use them for clients. You can use them for your own accounts. Just very, very cool. So I'm going to look at the Instagram report first. I really like how it compiles all this data and there's a ton of stuff in here. Uh, you know, you can look at your audience information, which I definitely recommend reviewing every single year to see how that's changed. You know, did the countries that follow you change? Did the genders that follow you change? This stuff is all helpful when you're coming up with branding and messaging and planning maybe in-person events, if that's something that you want to do. All of that's super helpful. But we're going to just kind of scroll through that for now. And what I want to look at is the top posts for the year. So first we're gonna look at posts and then we're gonna look at reels. Like I mentioned, YouTube is really that traffic platform. It's that SEO platform. The people who come to me on YouTube are in research mode. They want to learn stuff. So that is definitely what I focused on on that platform. On Instagram, however, it is a little bit more of a personal platform, you know, in, in many different ways. I mean, one, in just the people who follow me. I mean, I have people from high school, you know, people from college, my family who follows me on there. Obviously, that's not the majority of my followers on Instagram anymore, but they are still there. And I do still want to be able to have that outlet for myself and be a human. I do have a business account, Online Business Launch Lab, which I am looking to grow a lot more in 2023. So stay tuned for that. But right now my personal Instagram kind of functions as both, you know, personal and business. And also the personal stuff, I think it is still important at nurturing that audience. I cannot tell you how many times I have had people reach out to me and say, you know, I just really connect with a certain piece of your story, whether that's, you know, where you're from or how you grew up or, you know, your values and the things that you stand for. So personal branding is kind of hard because sometimes it feels like, you know, you're walking this fine line between personal and business, but people do buy from people and people do pay attention to the things that you stand for, your values, all that stuff. So anyway, I do think it is still important at nurturing and fostering a community. So as we can see here, the, the data really does support that idea in that my top posts are all personal posts. So this one is a recap post. And what I really like about Metricool is you can click on this report and actually see the post pop up in full. So the first one is like a recap, my 10 favorite photos or the most meaningful photos or something like that from 2022, very personal post. The next one was my birthday post, me blowing out my cake. Um, I've got just like a random picture of myself. It did, well, it did have a little bit of a business tie in because I talk about waking up early, being a night owl, that kind of thing. Uh, a photo of myself and my husband. And then the first real, real business post is not until five posts down where I talk about online courses and being one of Thinkific's top creators for 2021. And then we got more personal posts, you know, a picture of me and my husband again, a picture of me and Santa Barbara eating vegan food, like just nothing super heavy on the business content. And of course you just want to kind of look for trends in this content. You know, all of these posts are taken outside almost except for that fifth one. Really most all of them are taken outside or with natural light. So that's something from an aesthetic perspective that I can keep in mind. A lot of them I have cute outfits in, you know, that's also something Instagram people do like that kind of content on Instagram, smiling, being with other people. Right. So these are all trends that you can just take a note of. Obviously, you know, you don't want to like over curate your life or anything, but just keeping in mind, like this is the type of content that performs well on this platform. Now, if we scroll down to reels, this is really the business side of my Instagram, my posts, my photos and my stories to some degree are usually a little bit more personal, just like fun, silly. Hey, here's what's going on in my life. My reels tend to be a little bit more curated and a little bit more business focused. So again, we can look for any trends here. We've got a podcast clip, for my number one, what is my number two? This is a, this is a trending audio one. So I was promoting a course, my social media management accelerator, which is coming back very soon. Waitlist link in the show notes. If you want to be notified when the early bird pricing goes live third post, let's just see this one really quick was another trending audio one. Fourth one, another trending audio one. Okay. Seeing some trends. 
fifth one was a little bit more of a personal one about a glamping trip. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Again, look for those trends. It is good to know that my top performing post was a podcast clip because I was kind of nervous to post those as reels. I was like, I don't know. Everyone told me that I need to be like dancing and singing and, you know, doing all this trending stuff. But, you know, if you are creating long form content, repurpose that content, make the most out of it as you can. This is a great way to expand your reach without really, um, you know, having to expand your time all that much. So that's what I look at on that report. What performed well, what can I take note of? And I'm just going to like physically take some notes and make sure that I use that to inform my strategy moving forward. All right. So let's talk about YouTube again. YouTube is my main thing. It's the, the most important channel really for me. So on this metrical report, I have a ranking of videos that I posted in 2022 ranked by view count. So the number one, one, which hopefully is up to hundred K views by now is my, how I'd start a YouTube channel in 2023 video. I'm super happy that that video did well. It means a lot to me. I love YouTube. I'm so passionate about teaching about YouTube and talking about YouTube. Uh, so I'm really happy this one did well. My second top video of 2022, or that was posted in 2022 was about UGC content creation or UGC creation. Not really surprising there because that was a very trending term for 2022. It was all over TikTok. It was all over everywhere. UGC creator, all this stuff. So that one did pretty well. Content strategy, how to create a content strategy for any brand was my number three video. Again, very happy about that because this is the stuff I love to teach. And then number four was social media management skills and tools you need, which was actually a collaboration with Metricool. And number five was also a collaboration with Metricool, which was best social media scheduler for social media managers. Again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna look for trends. Well, the top three are all about content creation actually, which is pretty cool. Again, I love teaching that stuff and it does differ from what a lot of people kind of know me for. A lot of people found me through searching for social media management. And I love that. That's my top selling um, course, the social media management accelerator. It's definitely something that I love to teach that I think is a great entry into the world of digital. But I was kind of having an existential crisis last year and feeling like, you know, I didn't want to be typecast, if you will. Like that is not all that I am or all that I do. I don't know. I just want people to not just know me as one thing, you know? And so I did start creating content that was a little bit scary. That was a little bit of out of my comfort zone. I know that I can get viral videos by typing social media manager tip, you know, 101. I know that, but I wanted to try some different things. So that was a little scary, but I think it paid off. And we're going to talk about how it paid off by going to my actual YouTube analytics here, because this gives me a little bit of a deeper dive into my revenue and all of that stuff. So as you may know, one of the reasons that YouTube is such an important platform for me is one, it's my biggest platform. It drives the most traffic to my courses, as we talked about, and my service-based website as well. But it also does pay me. It also is a part of my revenue on its own. Like just by creating YouTube videos, I am able to make a little bit of revenue there. So let's look at that first and foremost. How much money did I make on YouTube in 2022? Well, in 2021, I made $49,869 in Google AdSense revenue. So that's the ads that play before, during, after, on the sidebar of the video. This year, my AdSense revenue was $61,368. So up quite a bit, which is great. I'm really happy to see that because I was a little bit nervous. One of the changes I made this year to YouTube was actually decreasing my uploads most of the year. I did go back up to three videos a week in December for Vlogmas, but most of the year I was just posting twice a week. And I was a little nervous, like what is that gonna do to my ad revenue? But I actually found that, you know, being more intentional with what I was posting actually paid off, I think. And also I was nervous, like I said, about taking some of those risks and posting some content that maybe is a little bit more content creator or YouTube-y, uh, less social media management. You know, I was nervous. Were people going to leave? Is that what people signed up for? And of course, some people did leave. And of course, some people didn't like it. But you know what? I really do believe, especially for YouTube or any type of content that you're creating, your heart does have to be in it. It is so hard for me to get up here and like pretend, you know, and, and again, it's not to say that I don't love social media management. I absolutely do. I love creating that content too, but 
when I'm really passionate about something, I just want to share. Another thing that I think is really helpful to look at this report is looking at your top earning content. Now, this is really interesting and I hope it serves as a little bit of motivation for those of you who are starting YouTube or really any, any long form platform, like a blog, like podcasting, like YouTube. If we look at my, my videos that actually earned me the most money this year, I don't see anything that was posted in 2022 until like my eighth video, my top earner was a video about social media strategy posted in September of 2020. My second one was posted in October of 2020, HoneyBook video. Third, online course, April of 2020. All of those top five videos, those earned me, you know, anywhere from 5,000 to, you know, $3,000 and were posted years ago. So I want you all to keep this in mind when you're feeling frustrated with YouTube or any of those platforms. The cool thing is YouTube is an investment. YouTube compounds over time. It sometimes takes a while for some of these videos to, to really take off. A lot of times I'll look at them a week after posting and be like, oh, nobody really liked that video, whatever. And then months or years later, it gets embedded in a blog post or it gets shared on a podcast or it just, I don't know, it just hits the algorithm for some reason and it starts to take off like this. So this is something that I always urge people to do is, you know, invest in long form content because it'll come back, you know, it'll, it'll save your butt years later. Even if I wasn't posting new videos this year, I would have been making money through these pieces of content. So keep that in mind. Really quick, I wanna talk about the other streams of income that YouTube provides. So obviously we have the businesses, we're gonna leave that out, you know, the courses and the service, um, just because that's a different thing and it cannot all be attributed to YouTube, although a lot of it is attributed to YouTube for sure. But ads we already talked about. So Google AdSense. The second is sponsors. Last year, sponsorships accounted for $39,175 in revenue. This year, that was up to $58,850. So that's a huge win as well, because I actually took on less sponsorships this year than I did last year, but I made more money. And the reason for that is I was just more intentional. Again, my my word of 2022, I think, was intention. I worked with brands that I truly believed in, that I knew were really gonna help you all, that I knew that I was going to be able to see results for the brand, which in turn makes them want to work with me again and again and have these longer term partnerships with. So I think that worked and I'm gonna continue that same strategy in 2023. And then lastly, we've got affiliate income. So affiliate income, you know, when I share a link and you click a link and then you buy a thing, I sometimes get a little bit of that sale. Doesn't cost any extra to the audience. I actually decreased revenue. So last year I earned about $43,000 in affiliate income. This year it was about 25,000. And I'm not really sure why that decrease was. I think it was just a less of a focus for me. I was way more focused on selling my own stuff, you know, pointing to my own courses, but definitely is nothing to, you know, bat an eye at. 25K is still a huge revenue stream and I'm super grateful for it. So thanks to everybody who clicks and, and buys things that I recommend. It really does help the channel, but I'm really happy with that. And I'm, you know, really happy actually with the Google AdSense number on its own because my last corporate job, I think that's about what my salary was. I think it was like 60,000 or 65,000. I can't remember exactly what it was, my ending salary, but to see 61,000, like I've basically been able to replace my corporate income just from my content platform, which is a really cool feeling. So thank you to everybody who watches the videos and um, engages with the videos. It helps not just my life, but it also helps me create more content for you. I know it sounds like cheesy, but the more energy that I'm able to focus on creating high quality free content, you know, the better, right? The better content that comes out of it. So really appreciate you all for watching. And I hope this inspired you a little bit and got you thinking about how you can make your content start working for you and helping you achieve your goals. So that's the annual production meeting. That's how we did. What are you going to see more of this year? I want to shake up this podcast. I realized I'm about to turn five years old. The Freelance Friday podcast is about to turn five. That is wild. 
And I really want to go back to some of my original intentions for the show. One of those intentions was to interview people. I love interviewing people. I love talking to people. I don't want to make it just an interview show. Don't worry. I know a lot of people really like the solo episodes, but sprinkling in maybe one a month again, I think is a goal of mine. So I'm going to work on that. If anyone has any ideas, seriously, like I said, you all are my co-producers. So please This is the one time that I'm going to ask for unsolicited feedback. I guess it is solicited, but use the comments, use the questions on Spotify and let me know what you'd like to see more of for this podcast, for the YouTube channel. I would genuinely love to know. Let me know what your number one goal is for 2023 in your business with your content. I would love to know how I can help you get there um, with, you know, future videos, podcast episodes and all that. And I thank you again for being a part of this journey and you all mean the world to me. So thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next week. Bye.